Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's James Grant Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. <laughs> you gotta crack up. Hi, Kelly. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy, Wait, New Year Happy New Year. What are you doing? Let me go. <laughs> I, I never like seeing myself on television or video, or I just don't like watching myself. And that's even worse. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so fun. I love it. I never get tired of it. <laughs> you have a nice New Year's, Kelly. Happy New I, Year. You know, I'm going to tell you what. I <laughs> renewed my soul. Did you? Yes, you did. You relaxed, didn't you? I relaxed. Oh. It, it Thank was your God. friend Jordy that said to me in the winter, what do we do in the Midwest in the winter? And she said, it's when my soul renews. I'll never forget that. And yes. it's the truth because, well, number one, we're in COVID. You can't go anywhere. Yeah. And number two, I'm snowed in. I can't go anywhere. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and uh, Jordy lives in Ohio and she just gets a nice big warm blanket and some nice warm food, some nice, you know, nice food to eat and some nice movies and cuddles up with their doggies and, and their honey and, and they, you know, stay together and they wow. love the snow. So and my dogs love the snow too. Oh, good. And have you been out in the snow a lot yet, Kelly? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but my dogs they? have. <laughs> No, no, no. But today I had to like galosh up and like put on these boots and this big thing and whatever and a hat and gloves and all these things that I would have never done. Um, really go to the store. That was just to go to the supermarket, you know, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a supermarket, but I went to the market. <laughs> and the closest was, big city around you, how far away is that? Madison? Oh, an hour and a half, Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. Yeah. wow and how wow. about you? I know you had some yeah, I lost my, my little doggy yeah. Boo Boo, uh, Maisie's brother, and uh, two weeks ago. So that's been a little traumatic, and she's just feeling it now. So she's been going through grief, and um, I've never seen a dog in grief before. My dog is in grief, and she's um, yeah. We we slept for twelve hours the other day, <laughs> twelve hours, and I was in the bed with her the whole time, sleeping with her, trying to sleep, and um, yeah, she hasn't eaten. So it, you know. I'm trying to help her out, but she's, you know, when you're in that state of mind, it's hard, you know, it's, it's a grief. And she was with that dog for 12 years. So oh, it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's so true that dogs suffer at, like we suffer. She, you bet. And maybe on some other levels, even more, because it's just, you know, they're just so unconditional, full of unconditional love, you know, oh. it's just a part of them. So, you know, and the hard part is watching a dog go through this. And this, or a dog being ill, and you really can't do anything with the dog. That's that's the hard part, you know. It's so hard. It's like, oh. so yeah, it's a little oh. stressful. But I'm I'm trying to cheer up the best I could because I can because she always cheers up me if I'm ever down. So I'm trying to do that for her. So. Wow, but she's okay. resting, so she's okay. She'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all send her her our love and prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm looking very forward to the show. Everybody, welcome everybody for to be here. And um, we have a very special show today. Uh, we have a, a guest on the show today who's a friend of ours. And she's a, a very special person to me because um, Peggy has helped me so many years. But she's also traveled around the world with me and helped me to... Uh, I don't know, change the world, I guess, in some ways. And she's been really there to help me out with um, all my travel and to be with me and escort me to different places. And as you can imagine, different countries in the world and talking to dead people, um, it's a whole different experience in different countries and different people. And so she's really been fantastic at that. And um, for years, she worked with, oh, I'll read people her background. How about that? So Peggy Fitzsimmons um, holds a PhD in counseling psychology, and she's uh, supported people in freeing themselves from emotional, mental, physical clutter clutter for over 25 years. And she incorporates holistic and mind-body modalities, as well as intuitive energy work into her approach. Um, and she's done a lot of work with the Omega Institute, where I met her originally years ago. Uh, and she supports leaders in the field of spiritual development. She then moved on to work as a consulting producer for Oprah Winfrey's Emmy Award winning television series, Super Soul Sunday. And she's not uh, usually do social media and she's really not into that. So we're lucky to have Peggy. We, Kelly, you, you, you asked her to be on the show because I did. you read her book. She has a new book called Release and it's um, creating a clutter-free life, um, yep. a soul-free life. A soul-driven life. Soul-driven life. And 
you just finished reading it. Okay, I'm a, I'm her number one <laughs> fan. Number one, I always was her number one fan, but hey, I am. I love her. I think she's the. I think she's fabulous. I would watch her travel with you, and I thought she yeah, she's amazing. 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 I, we've had great conversations. She's just fabulous, and I love her book, which we're going to talk about. But I'll just give you a hint here. It's called Release. Great title, Release. It is great such a great title. title. Perfect title. It's a perfect title, and it's such a great book. Everybody's got to get this book. It's so great because she doesn't just talk about cluttering, decluttering the physical stuff, you know, like I have too many towels and too many clothes and too much junk. That's one aspect, but she actually goes into the declutter of the mental, the emotional, the relationships. Oh, this is, and the energetic. So this is going to be great. And, been, and she does. She goes on all those different levels. And she'll, when I was on the road with her, we, I mean, she has physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. Without a doubt, we did once that I was having a problem with my sciatica and she helped me heal physically. And we're in the middle of some store killing time. And we're literally doing a yoga pose. She brings me to a yoga pose to open up the sciatica and, and it works. And I was like, wow. So yes, yeah, she's um, my support. She's great. She's, she's helped a lot of people. So let's bring her on Peggy Fitzsimmons. Hello, Peggy Fitzsimmons. There she is. Hello. She's flying. Hi, Peggy. Peggy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, first of all, um, welcome. And um, a lot of people, you. Are, you can ask questions for Peggy, too. She's going to take questions mm -hmm. in a while. But uh, first of all, why did you write the book? Why did I write the book? Yeah. Um, I wrote the book because I've done the work for a long time, and I felt like I was hoarding my own knowledge, and mm -hmm. I wanted to share it and put it forth. Um, and it took me a while to pull it together piece by piece, inch by inch. Um, but I had made a commitment to myself that I would do it. So my greatest joy in all this, honestly, is that I kept my word to myself and finished it. And now it can go forth and help people. Hopefully, you know, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there. So yeah, there is. Well, I love, I love the book. I think the book is fantastic and I've oh, read it you. cover to cover. I think it's, it's an easy read and it's a really good read because it gives you step by step. It makes you look at yourself where you currently are in the world with everything, whether it's a physical stuff, whether it's your relationship. I mean, it really makes your soul stop and look and you have so many uh, so many gems in this book. I mean, I, I, I one of the things you say is that um, you, you talk about hoarding. And I think this is so important because when people think of decluttering, some people think, oh, you know, they could be a hoarder or whatever. And you say hoarding is really the, the idea of it is to amass things for the future. And I thought that was so interesting, amassing things for the future. In other words, you're holding on to this because at some future place you'll use it. Yeah. So where does that come from, Peggy? Where does that? Well, the, do defi that? the definition of hoarding is just, you know, preserving things, holding on to things for preservation or amassing for the future. And that's what we do. All of us, we're all hoarders. And I think, you know, hoarding has become this dirty word in the culture. It's like, oh, well, I have stuff, but I'm not a hoarder. Uh -huh. You know, but, we're, but we all hold on to things. Um, mental things, you know, thoughts, feelings, emotions, all kinds of different things we hold on to, physical clutter. But it's really this idea of like taking in something and being unwilling to release it. Release it. And this exchange of give and take, you know, we don't really do that. And our sole nature is to do that. It's to to be free, to let things go. Hoarding is about holding on. And, so, and, and your soul is about movement, isn't it? You have to move. Life is about movement and your soul is always moving. And if you're holding on, you are stopping that. You're stagnating. Yeah, you're yeah. stopping the flow and stagnating the energy. Yeah. And and we're all doing it. You can look at every home in every town in every city. I mean, it's stunning. It's staggering. Yes, you declared my garage. I'll never forget. <laughs> Well, I don't think I was wanting to do that. But, well, I want that crystal. Well, <laughs> how many crystals do you have, James? You have five. Now, which one do you really want? Oh. Yeah. What has been your hardest uh, experience, well, if you can remember, the, of decluttering someone's house? Or, and, and it goes into their lives and the emotional part of them. Do you remember like one of the, one of the hardest ones you had to work with? Um, I think for me, the work has always been like, it's such a it's such a gift to be able to be with someone that way because it's so intimate and it's it's really sacred work. I mean, you are like I used to be a therapist like Kelly, you are and you sit in the office for an hour and you talk about whatever and then they go. But when you're in 
someone's space, you see everything. There's no hiding. So it takes a lot of courage for someone to be willing to, to work with a person to help. Um, and the other thing about doing the work is that, to me, clutter is about fear, right? The fear of the ego, the holding on, but it's yeah. really about terror. You know, people who struggle with clutter are dealing really with terror. And I've seen it. I've seen it in a moment when someone's going through the sock drawer, you know, and literally like afraid to, well, I, I kind of want those blue ones. And, you know, they can't mm. release the 50 pairs of socks they have. So it's just a representation of the internal fear. So to me, it's very, um, it's just very sacred, private, um, tender, vulnerable work. So it's never hard. What's hard is coming up against the person, their ego, if you don't realize that it's just terror, you know, if you think it's their anger or their frustration, then you can get triggered maybe, but it, that doesn't really happen for me. So, so in your experience of doing this, what was like the hardest one that you remember, like with the different layers of people that you thought it was just gonna be a decluttering gig and then there's a layer or something? And go, well, yeah, it's like, always layers. It's always, always layers. layers. So, and you don't know until you, know. you get into it, right? You don't you know until you meet You don't that. know what you're getting into. Like, right. And I work off a of feeling. So for instance, I remember going to this big, giant, 10,000 square foot, beautiful house in LA and I walked in and it's beautiful, but I, I walked in and I said, oh my God, this is a castle of grief. You know, that's, a, that's what came to me is a castle mm -hmm. of grief. Now, I didn't know what all that was, but I could feel it. And then you do kind of the, the relationship building and, and looking through the things, and then you start to piece together the story. Um, so like that, tapestry, that's a little tapestry. Beautiful. Yeah, it's very multi-layered, very magical. And do um, they let you, Peggy, do they let you into their space in that, let's say you get there, you feel this mountain of grief, this castle of grief, and you get into that, and you, you're, you got to be careful, you don't want to, you know, you got to be very careful what you say to them. But are there moments where you you get they let you in, and then something else opens up, and it's like a whole incredible ex a healing experience? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's one. I don't know if you remember Kelly, but there was this woman I worked with once where I went to her house, and she had this giant couch. It was a big house, sort of these big rooms. It's a giant couch, and it just had all these baby clothes on it, every color, every size, and it was kind of odd because what were they doing there? And I just met this woman. She had called me that day saying, I need help. I'm moving in two weeks. And I, I had a cancellation. I went over there. And now I don't know this woman. I, I'm standing in front of this couch. And I just say to her, what, what happens when you look at this couch, you know, and boom, immediately she's sobbing about the miscarriages and the fertility treatments. And, you know, these, these were things she was holding on to for this next baby. So, so, you know, all my experience luckily plays in because I, I've been a therapist. I know how to work with the emotion, with the energy and all that. And so I'm able to manage that. And um, but but that's the kind of profound stuff that, that can happen. I, I remember one of the stories was that's what was a profound story, by the way. There was another story you talked about. And this reminded me of, oh, I don't know. Let's say anybody in my practice um, <laughs> <laughs> where you walk into this beautiful home beautiful and very spiritual and every, it's just perfect and then you go into the closet and you yeah. open up the closet and the closet is covered in crap up yeah. all one way and it turns out the person is having an affair with this one and a, da, 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 this one and da, 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 this one and this one has covered up this perfect home with that's the right. stuff that's going on inside. And I the mean, bedroom closet is, is the bedroom closet. Up. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you can't write this stuff. I mean, it's, right. you know, it's incredible. I mean, you really do have to be a therapist on some level because you're getting into oh, the area of shame also, aren't you? Oh, it's so much shame. People have so much shame about being seen, right? Being seen, their stuff being seen, um, you know, because in our homes, we that's where we can relax and kind of let things be. Sometimes, you know, things are dirty or unkempt or, you know, that's a big thing for me in, in my work. Like I always encourage people like is your space really worthy of your soul you know mm -hmm. and and it's it's an interesting question and you'd be surprised how people keep these things that they've chosen from the whole universe you know of all the things in this world they've chosen these particular things and yet yes. sometimes they don't respect them you know they don't treat them with love and care i love that you talk about to identify with you instead of the ego mind use the soul mind yeah. Use your soul mind to decide if you're going to keep this or keep that. 
How do you do that, Peg? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like when? Yeah, I think. I mean, the whole premise of of the book, the way I decided to write it, and you know, James and I have had many conversations about this over the years. But, and we are all dealing with the fact that we live with two aspects. You know, we have a soul aspect mm -hmm. that is free by nature. It's inherently wise. Uh, you know, it knows peace and gratitude and safety and belonging and. Um, and it lets go. And then we have an ego aspect. And the ego aspect is about preservation, self-preservation, success, survival, holding on, you know, all that. So these two aspects are constantly, um, I, I, I use the analogy of, you know, vying for the wheel, you know, who's at the wheel of mm -hmm. your life. And, um, and it's the human condition, you know, that ego mind is never going away. The soul aspect is here waiting to be self-realized that's what that means to realize who we are we're human beings you know we're more than human and so that's the dance that's the game we're in and um so decluttering is about the holding the bigger picture of ourselves as souls as human beings and then moment by moment finding out are we awake at the wheel or asleep and <laughs> That's what the book is essentially about. It's really a book about the soul masquerading as a book about decluttering. <laughs> no, but it's really true. Yeah. It's really true because what it did for me is it really made me conscious of everything at that moment and staying in the present mm -hmm. moment, being conscious. And I love you had so many great tips, but my favorite, one of my favorite tips was even if you could release five things a day, five yeah. little things, just that's it. Five little things could be a little piece of paper. It could be a coffee cup. It could be, and that builds the muscle. Yeah, absolutely. It builds a muscle, builds a momentum, and it makes it not scary for people because most people don't deal with clutter because the whole thing is overwhelming. They open the closet, they go, forget that, shut the closet, and then they don't want to think about it again. But what people don't realize is they the energy of all that stuff weighs on them. Mm -hmm. It drains them. It overwhelms them. It makes them feel agitated. They don't want to enter the garage because, oh, I can't even go in there. And we all have spaces like that in our homes. So we have to own that it's affecting us. So if it's affecting us, then how can we work with it in a way that's fun and light and playful? You know, this is not a caravan of despair. You know, it's a release party. Like, this is exciting. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's a release party. Release party. That's a great yeah, way to talk to clients about it. Yeah, we're, I'm coming over. We're having a release party. Oh, my that's gosh. Because the energy, start, you start to lighten up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember many readings I've done with many over the many years, um, readings where the, the spirit would come through and say to the person in the house, uh, that, that room off to the left, that's so much stuff in there and it's holding you back from being yourself. You need to release that because it's stagnating your energy of your life. Right. And once you get that released, you'll be able to move freer. It's so true, isn't it? It's true and it's because clutter is it's stagnant energy. Um, but another way to say it is it's untapped energy. So oh, great. All, That's see great. What I mean, so all this yeah. stuff like, you know, the stuffed drawer or your emotional stuff you're pushing down or the crap in the storage unit across town, that all has energy that's available to you. That all has potential. And once it's liberated, which is another word I use all the time, you know, liberated, 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 then energy starts to flow and then magical things happen. So absolutely, James, that's a huge part of it. And I've been at many shows with James where stuff like that has come up right. with randomly in, you know, different venues all over the world. Where yeah. it's like, uh, there's some bedroom with a bunch of crap under your bed. What's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the person always identifies it. Like if James calls that out in the audience to the person, they're like, I know. You're right. And they know it. People know they have people clutter and people are ashamed of it, like you said before, Kelly. Yeah. And there's nothing to be ashamed about. This is the this is the culture we're in. This is a, an ego mind that says, I'm not enough, you're not enough, and there is not enough. And a collective ego mind culture saying the same thing and more. saying, buy more, do more, buy more get stuff. more, All achieve stuff. more. Yeah. It's All a setup. Stuff. You're all it's being set up. Set up. <laughs> so true. So oh, we're I getting a lot of comments about people who uh, their parents have passed away and now they're stuck with the stuff and or their parents are alive and about ready to pass away and yeah. stuck with their stuff. Yeah. Do you have any tips for them? Or yeah. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. So a lot of people leave this planet without taking care of their stuff. 
And that leaves people of our age, you know, in the 50s and 60s, for the most part, you know, dealing with older parents who then we have to kind of clean up their stuff. And it's it's a very difficult thing for people. And so I have a lot of compassion for that. Um, but that does happen to a lot of people. Um, and I think on the flip side, if the person has passed and left things behind that um, sometimes people feel responsible for or guilty that they don't want to keep it. Um, but again, it's kind of like if it doesn't feed you, if it doesn't give you that vibration that loves you back, then you're not giving it life by keeping, you know, by holding it in the basement or shoving it in the room. You know, you want to give it life just like you want to give the spirit of those people of past life. Um, very true. Pe Peggy, it's very true. I've had some, you know, many times when the spirit would come through and say, why do you have my candle holders there? What do you have my dish? You're not using yeah. them. Give it to somebody who can use it. I don't want just to hold on to it. Use it. They've often talked about using life. their items, right? Give it life. And also you can life. get creative. Like I had a, a person who had these fishing rods that their you know, father had left and they weren't into fishing or anything like that. And it became this big thing. What do I do about them? And I said, well, take one and make a cool art piece with it. You know, they had kind of a study, you know, so they made this really cool thing and then they could release the rest. You know, it's like you can honor the memory, you can honor the person, but but holding on to it all and inhibiting your own life is not honoring the person because that person's on the other side saying, live your life. That's right. I'm over here. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't do it that way. So there's yeah. all this implicit permission from the spirit realm, in my opinion, but people get afraid and they feel like they have to, they're not respecting when Susan, it's actually the Susan Reed asks, says a good thing here. She says, are people afraid they will forget their past relatives? Mm -hmm. that's oh, that's an interesting one. Good, Susan. Yeah. I, I think the ego part of us is always afraid. We're afraid to be forgotten ourselves, right? That's why we want to be approved of and validated. And am I okay? And am I loved? I mean, that's a constant worry in our minds. And so, yeah, I think that's a really lovely way to think of it. But, you know, we, our souls don't forget. Yeah. Our souls don't forget. Wow. Um, you know, Peggy, this is very, uh, what Kelly mentioned earlier, the one tip was if I take five things and take, you know, see what you can release. So let's say tonight, um, after the show, yeah. someone looks in there, and could they take one or two or three things, let's say tonight? And and when they hold that object, do they feel like, why do I need this? And what do they ask themselves? What, what are they, when they yeah. hold the object? They, they well. What is the it feeding me? Is it feeding yeah. me or is it not? The first thing I say to people is like, and people who are listening now, and you can kind of drop in after the show and think about this pretty quickly and something will come to you, but you want to really kind of ask like, what is my soul longing for right now? You know, it's 2021. What are some words, some images of what, what feels like what I need and want right now on a deep level? And if you sit for a minute and just be with yourself, things will come up, you know, and often there are things like I want, you know, I want room to grow. I want to do my art again. I want to feel light and bright and engaged. Um, I want to live honestly. You know, there's all kinds of things that people are longing for. So the first thing I would say is to sit with yourself tonight and, and ask that question. And once you get that answer, then you're, you're golden. Because from there, you just look at anything in your life and say, does this contribute to that feeling? Does this contribute to what my soul is longing for? And very quickly, you'll find the things that that don't. Um, and, and are there things, Peggy, at the same time, are there things that pull away from your soul that you're holding on, that people are holding on that pull their soul down? Absolutely. Yes, yes, exactly. They don't contribute to what the person is really deeply longing for. And by nature of not contributing to it, they're affecting it negatively. So like I'm thinking old down. love letters from the sent you or holding on to old letters or is it from someone else yeah. that passed. Oh, I've had, like I've had people, I had a woman who had this trying to engage in a new marriage and we're in the guest room, which has a bed and the comforter is from her time with an ex-boyfriend, <laughs> right? <laughs> and now she's with a new person wanting to have babies and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, oh. so let's oh. remove that energy and you know, that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. And, and you do you do um um cl you have clients on the phone mostly phone re phone calls you do right phone conferences and currently right now I'm just working in more of a coaching capacity coaching. with people so it's perfect with the book because the book is is company it's a companion to do the work and that's really what 
my role is being with people, but with COVID and being in the homes and all that, I'm not. No, but really... I've heard you on the phone with people coaching, and you're phenomenal on the phone with oh, people. I you. mean, you are. She's phenomenal. Yeah. So I don't think you have to be present with them. I think just on the phone, when you speak to people, they get your energy. You, you're right. Peggy is 110 percent with you when you're with her in the telephone. Yeah. I mean, I've been. I stayed in a couple of phone calls. You know that, but I was listening to you. <laughs> But you are 110% with that person. So I don't know if you have to be there physically. I think you're just there with them. You can help them so much that way. Well, I think it's about company because like I said before, clutter is about fear and, and very often terror. So people need to know they have company. And I would say to people, if you get the book, if you like the book, if you want to do some work, find some friends, you know, work together with them. Like it, you just need that support. You know, you need people who are on the same path and trying to free themselves a little bit. That's um, very true. Here's yeah. one from Kim, Kim Ann Snodgrass. Is that her name? I love this name. About control. Um, let's see. Says, Sometimes it's a control thing from a generation older. Here we are. Oh, Sometimes I see. Control, a generation older want you to hang on to grandma's chair even though they don't want it. It's forced to have it in their mm -hmm. home. It doesn't want it, but mom won't you know, take it away. Come, yeah. How much control? It is a lot of control involved in it, isn't it, Peggy? Yeah, well, con what's control? You know, control comes from fear, right? Yeah. Trying to manage something, trying to yeah. make something a certain way. That's the ego mind, right? That's trying to fix and adjust and make sure everything's safe and everything else. And it's all an illusion, as we know, because we're out here on this spinning planet. <laughs> right? Right. So, um, but yeah, I think it does come down to sometimes it's people guilting, you know, putting their energy into your space. Like, oh, you have to keep that. They, they guilt you. But ultimately, it's still in your um in your being in your power to to say no you know i'm trying to create a clutter free and soul driven life i need to move on from this so you have to go back to your basic principles then you have to go back What's to the basic right principles. for you this yeah. is right for you i mean look look physical clutter for me everything i own fits in my car right it's does true. that make, does that make That's me a true. hero not really because compared to a minimalist i you know there are minimalists who live with a hundred things now think about that. A hundred things. Okay, Kelly, your glasses, one. <laughs> right. Another two. You know, we're oh, just my books. Uh <laughs> <laughs> right. so you know, there's no um there's no right amount of, of things for people, but it is about your own willingness, like that question about to to be in management, empowerment, control of your own life. Yeah. The name of the book, again, everybody, is release. Release. Great, great title. Great, great, great title. title. I love books with one. I have word. to give. Can I give credit to my friend who gave me that yes. title? Yes. yes, certainly. That is from a very dear friend of mine, who many people know, who is an I read this an amazing person named Monica Lewinsky, who has sifted through all sorts of clutter in life and has been working diligently to come into contact with her soul uh, all the time. And she actually said. You should call it release, and it was like, oh. yeah, love and inspiration. Ever grateful no doubt. For, for that. And the cover is phenomenal too. I told you that cover is just like wow. And what, what did you tell me? Where'd you get the cover from? Hello. Well, I saw this picture, and the the picture I used, I made into the blue color because I like blue, as we all wear our blue. <laughs> Called you ahead of time. Um, <laughs> but the picture is actually an image I found online by someone named Tithi Loudthong. Strange name T I T H I L A U D T H O N G, and um, this person's a graphic artist and has all kinds of beautiful images. And this image originally was in grays and whites and uh, golds, but I wanted the blue tone, so I changed it. So look up Tithi Loud Thong if you're interested. Beautiful. In graphic art. It's very beautiful. You mean it's very very nice. Um, There's a woman here, Anne Margaret, which I have to say, Anne shout Margaret. out, love your name, Anne Margaret. Uh, <laughs> Is should I keep my wedding album from an ex? And oh, it was that's a family an divorce. One. That's an interesting question. <laughs> the answers are within, as we say. But I, I think when you have to feel that's such a personal thing, and you yeah. have to kind of feel into it, and there's nothing wrong with keeping it, but you have to get honest with yourself about what energy might be there from that relationship? Are you holding on to something? Is there a certain few pictures you can keep and release the heavier weighted album? You know, if you want to um, make a memento of the time, it's a true experience of your life, you know? So there's no right or wrong. Um, Peggy, is it, is it sometimes people have a fear of not remembering their past, not remembering a scenario, a situation from the past, absolutely. they hold out of time. Because to me, as I'm reaching my 60s here, I, I hold things as now I can remember what that experience was like with the photographs. Oh, I remember that now. 
Yeah, I think that's that's totally fine, but I think it's about quantity, right? So if you've right. got 50 pictures from, you know, your friend's wedding, right. take the two or three great ones and let the rest go. That'll give you the, the recognition of the memory if that's what you're looking for. Um, and that really goes for parents too. I've worked with a lot of parents who they keep every single thing their kid has ever done from, you know, every piece of artwork, every piece of schoolwork, and they've got bins and bins and bins thinking they have to help their kid remember their childhood or, you know, their kid might want that someday, you know, so there's a balance there. Keep the precious things. This isn't about getting rid of what's precious and meaningful and that loves you back. You know, if you look at a, a painting your kid made it when they were five and you go, oh, that's okay. Keep it. You know, there's no rules here. We're just trying to dig out from the unnecessary stuff. And it applies also, Peggy, to people that have, uh, parents have lost children that passed over. I mean, that's a lot. I dealt with that. You get a lot of that, I'm sure, too. It's the same thing in a way, keeping two or three things, right? Not a whole wardrobe. Or yeah, or not, you know, keeping a room intact the way it was when the kid, you know, was alive. And I get that. I mean, listen, I haven't lost a kid. So I, I, I that's a personal choice for anybody. But again, it's that same theme. It's like, is, is what I'm keeping you know, a, a reminder of my life's journey on this planet, which is a temporary journey. Is it something that fills me with love and reminds me of the truth of who I am? That's fine. But if it's more than that, you know, you know, if yeah. it's more than that. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's a big thing, by the way, you know, we are here temporarily. And my friend, my friend, Jerry, he's 83. He said it best. He said, Peggy, he said, I'm downsizing to an urn. <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> and i mean that is dark stuff but it's true it's like true. what are we thinking yes yeah, what are we thinking you know well speaking of urns <laughs> then what <laughs> because then you have all you know i've had clients that have had their mother their father their animals their uncle and aunts mm -hmm. in their closet yes i've yeah. come across many of those what's this oh that's my cat right. oh, okay so again again is it okay to release all of that it's absolutely okay to release it, but if you don't want to release it, then my suggestion is please give it a place of honor. Treat it sacredly. It shouldn't be shoved in the back corner of the closet where you don't know. You know, if Fido is that, you know, with you and that important, then give Fido a place that's respectful, you know, yeah, and that's beautiful. That's yeah. the that's the distinction to me, you know. If you're gonna keep it then make sure it has a sacred place to live because you've chosen it. You've chosen to keep it. And Peggy, I have a question for you. Um, so in the book, the, the subtitle, Soul Filled Life. So tell people what you feel is some characteristics of a soul filled life. So okay. So, you know, I said before that we have these two aspects of ourselves always buying for the wheel. So the subtitle of my book is to create a clutter free and soul driven life, meaning how can we have the soul at the wheel more often than the ego at the wheel? And this is a constant practice. I mean, it's a sure. moment by moment practice. So there's no end game. You know, this is, right. this is what we're doing here. We are here to have our souls at the wheel, to remember who we are and to serve our love to the world. And anything that we have, thoughts that are, you know, not helpful, uncomfortable emotions, you know, turbulence, disharmony, competition, conflict in relationships, all these things get in the way, physical clutter, all these things get in the way of serving our love to the world. And that's the only game in town. You know, Kelly, you're doing it through your work as a therapist. You're doing it through this podcast or is this called a podcast? It's Facebook no. Live, <laughs> whatever. Facebook. See, I don't know no. the term. Um, you know, James is doing it with his readings and his school and that's how he serves his love to the world. Anything that gets in the way of that is clutter. And then that's that's the purpose. That's the meaning of life. I think. And it's really changing your perspective and, and filling yourself with that soul, the soul self, if you will. Those whether it's from mindfulness or meditation or change your perspective of, of so love. So many pathways. And I feel like at this point in in time, you know, I said this to James a while ago. I said, you know, we're in the birth canal of a new consciousness. This, this whole time, it's been a rough ride. You know, yeah. people, it's it's brutal for people. And so, so one thing is that those of us who are working in the spiritual realms or trying to be helpers to people and, you know, doctors, psychologists, all different forms, you guys, the way you do it, it's like, 
that's what we're doing here, you know, and, and we have to remember that we don't want to come out of this time the same. We have to come out with a more soul directed way of living in the world, everybody, the whole world. And that's hopefully what's happening right now. And we're here to see it. We're here to be part of it. And I also think, I just want to say this, I also think that in honor of these people, I get emotional here, but in honor of these people who have given their lives with COVID, who have passed on, you know, who have taken, you know, taken one for the team, so to speak, meaning they've, you know, they've had this horrible struggle and, and have passed on and their families are suffering. It's like, we got to do better, you know, we got to do better for them, for the world to be a better place. So their dying is not in vain. Yeah, yeah. true, so, true. Yeah. Wow. So Peggy, how can people, um, oh, they, they want to know how they can purchase it. You can purchase it on amazon.com, right? Yes, Amazon. you can purchase it on Amazon. You can purchase it in a Kindle form or in a paperback. And thank you, David D. Benetto, <laughs> for even considering purchasing it. I appreciate it. Um, You'll love it. very shy, so <laughs> that is important. <laughs> and um, wow. It's a great wow. book. It's such a great book. And I've learned so much. And it's and needed. I it's so needed and you cover really everything including trauma and abuse and in all kinds of really deep emotional emotions deep yeah and you go in there and um it's i think everybody's going to get something really powerful out of this book because it Thank really it's going to make start getting you conscious and sure, you're right absolutely right with what you just said peggy because people are dying right now and we're having i mean the people the souls that are leaving right now uh they, the families are torn apart. Um, they can't be together. And um, it's really a time of great release, isn't it? I mean, on, on every level, yeah. on every soul level here, it's a time of release. And co coming with that or comes with that is what comes with that is um, the change in shift in consciousness. And that's where we're headed. And your book really brings us to that shift in consciousness right now. That, that's so needed. It and puts so many people look at what's important and what's not important. Well, that's been one of the gifts of the COVID time, I think, for people. You know, it, it forced everybody to slow down, to focus a little more on what matters, to get out into nature, yeah. you know, to, to be with people in more intimate, real ways. And, and, and then also feel the absence of that, right? So connecting all these different ways. And there's so many people out in the world doing the work of, of raising this consciousness and shifting people. So if this book can be part of that, like, you know, I'm so grateful because so many people have helped me in my own development, you know, James being one of them and many, many others. And so that's what we're here for. We're here to help each other remember who we are. That's right. And, and that's, that's right. it. So. So that's that's what it's funny, Peggy. As you're talking before about things, I'm, I'm thinking of these things that weigh us down. In order to be yeah. released to be lighter, we have to let go of that which weighs us down, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what about question I have also is what would you find where someone has held on to an object or things? Um, let's say it's really with trauma, maybe it's involved with the trauma they had or whatever it might be, and they keep it. What could be the thing that happens to them from keeping that object for so long, holding on to it? What eventually can manifest with that person? I'm just curious. Um, All the well, I, the behaviors or fears well, think, or? Yeah, I mean, I think when we hold on to, you know, as souls, we're, we're just having experiences. It's pretty neutral. Right now, it feels charged in our human life. It's like, oh my God, I'm going on this show tonight. What, you know, what if I sound terrible? What if I don't, you know, all this other stuff. Judgment, but really, yeah. it's just another experience. Right. And then when we hang up this show, it's just over and that's it, you know. Um, I think sometimes people hold on to things based in trauma memories, trauma experiences. And, and, and I think it's sometimes people need to hold on to things for a certain period of time. Like, I never tell people, like, you have to get rid of something. People think getting rid of clutter whether it's mental clutter, emotional clutter, is like forcing yourself to get rid of something. Things let go of you when, mm -hmm. when the time is right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I never force someone because remember, clutter is about fear. So right. you don't meet fear with force. You meet fear with gentleness, with questions, with curiosity, you know, not judgment and pushing. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers your question, but it's a big thing for people who are facing clutter in their homes, as an example, right now, and saying, "Oh, I don't want to sludge through all that crap, and it's you know it's too hard." No, 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 no. When you have a clear sense of yourself as a soul, and you have that soul intention we talked about, like what your soul is longing for right now, 
the things that don't match that will begin to release you. And that's the magic of decluttering. That's why it's so fun. Wow. I love that you look at it as fun. I do. <laughs> what could be more fun than coming back to your true nature, to your true, true. self? So true. Yeah. And it is yeah. a process. It is a process. So let's say you do somebody's home and you and really they start to feel really good. They can slip back in or another wound comes up that they didn't wear. And then yes. kind of you have to go back again. Is that Absolutely. about right? Yes, yes. Decluttering is not a one-time deal. People like that. You know, you watch the show. I have it in the right. book, you know. They clear out the hoarder's house and she's sitting, you know, at her kitchen having a cup of tea and everything's fine. That's not how it works. It happens in layers. And every it's like a one-way ticket. You know, you buy this one-way ticket, you begin to release some stuff, things change. You feel lighter. Your energy changes. You get more clear about what you want. So you start acting differently. You take on some new thoughts like, "Oh, Maybe the world is a safe place. Maybe there are, I am connected. Maybe I'm, I don't have to feel lonely all the time. You know, all these little things change and it just keeps going and going. And it goes forever. I mean, we're all dealing with, I dealt with all kinds of mental clutter today about doing this. You know, we all deal with that over and over. We have a, we have a ego and a soul aspect. And the goal is to get the ego riding shotgun <laughs> instead of at the wheel. I have an That's interesting so question true. for you. <laughs> So, so, you know, they talk about hoarders, and it's actually a mental disorder, right? There are many hoarders who have an actual mm. mental disorder. It's so an anxiety can, disorder. It's an anxiety disorder. So how can you deal with someone with a really strong anxiety disorder, like hoarding, and, and declutter them? Do you have to get into that anxiety disorder? Do you have to – how do you help them with that? Uh, is there medications? Is there what, – what is the way they do deal with that, the anxiety? Because they say some people there's a mental, actual mental problem there. Yeah. Kelly, did you want to say something about that? Well, <laughs> some people actually do require medication. Yeah, but I think I think that what you're you go in with a lot of love. I think is how you're doing love and compassion and understanding. Gentleness. Medication, if it's that bad, James, medication. Right. Would I you think. get somebody else, like a doctor, a med yeah. medical doctor, to look at them, or go somewhere else to actually have them assessed? No. Yeah, I mean, people have, you know, there's all kinds of support you put around a person exactly. dealing with anything. So, and I I have worked with what you would call, you know, diagnosed hoarders, let's say. Right. Um, a few a few people, but mostly I work with kind of the average everyday hoarder. It's a little yeah. it's a different, but it's still, <laughs> right. same, it's still the same mentality driving it and the same fears and stuff. It's just a more extreme version with the hoarding. And there are very many, many professionals working with those extreme cases and so i would defer to them on on all of that for sure and if you if you are that kind of person look it up resource you know google it there are people that can help you okay i love this question kathy moody asks what about your partner what about your partner who may not want to clear cutter uh, cl clear away clear your clutter cutter. and give away your possessions yeah. What do you do about that That's when there's a partner? One. It yeah, sure is. Well, it always comes up, especially when someone starts to begin to want to take their own step. Really? The and yeah. then they start pointing the finger. Well, I can't do it until he or she does it or they do it, right? Everybody has a um, – so I say, like, in the 12-step program, they say stay on your side of the street. <laughs> take care of your own partner. That's great. And, and let them do it their way. And many people have that match because, you know, like they right. have the husband holds on, the wife wants to let go, right. you know, so that, Interesting. yeah, you have to, you have to stick with your soul there. Let them be on their own process. Don't push it. You know, don't, you know, force them to read the book or say they're bad because they have too much clutter. I it's mean, look what comes up for them, Peggy. Look what comes up for them because if there's two people there and one says hold on clutter, the other doesn't, and they get back to their soul self, boy, many different layers of stuff coming up for that, for that relationship to go through. That's a big I, one. It's a big one. I had a guy from, you know, I'm reconnecting with all these different people from this book, which has been fascinating. So this guy I used to know in high school wrote to me just yesterday on, on Messenger and he said, he said, you know, I bought this book for my partner, you know, for my partner, but I actually started reading it and now I see there's work for both of us to do. Oh, so, you know, I thought yeah. that was really sweet. It's great. Super, super yeah, sweet. Yeah, you don't want to blame and judge anyone. That's the main thing. No. No, no we, we don't need to. We all have different to. thresholds. We all have different thresholds. So, and if you do have that relationship, there is some stuff about relationship clutter in the book, which will maybe help, you know, come to peace with how to accept. And you talk about the magic of 10%. Yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah. Tell me, I remember that from you. Yeah. <laughs> My garage is 10%. Yeah. Go on. Well, you know, because we talk about people are hesitant to get rid of things or they feel afraid. So instead of, you know, I just say, look, if you can get rid of 10%, if you've got 10 shirts in your closet, you can release one. Great. You know, at 10% and everything, 10% more positive thoughts, 10%. You know, it's all in the book, a lot of examples of this, but the 10% thing is key because it keeps people feeling safe and they can also see progress. And very often you'll do more than that. You know, you might go into your shoe shoe closet tonight and say, wait a minute, oh look, I did 30%, you know? But 10% is just a good safe rule that keeps you keeps you motivated. Yeah. Have you ever heard, Peggy, of that one, which I, I don't know where I heard this from, but uh, every year I try doing it. At the end of the year, like I'm in the middle of it right now, where you go through your closet and you throw away those clothes, which I've not worn in two years. Have you heard the one, two years? If you, yeah, one you, year, six months, there's all kinds of versions of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That. And that's a, nice like maintenance, that that's a nice maintenance program. The other thing I tell people too, like from anyone listening now from this day forward, if you bring something into your house, you know, a new shirt, a new this, a new that. Um, make sure you release one thing in exchange. And that'll at least keep you at homeostasis. And that becomes <laughs> a practice as well. Um, so yeah. I always do that if I bring something in. And I talk about it in the book because you can exchange, you know, um, physical clutter for uh, relationship clutter, right? Like maybe you say, I'm sorry all the time. You know, if people, some of these people, you hear them, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, okay, so I'm going to bring in a new shirt but I'm going to release one of those sorries I say every day. You know, you can play with it. You want to, you want to have fun with it, you know? Right. And where are people releasing their stuff to now? Good well, question. Yeah. Good I'm question. actually trying to think of where I'm going to take all this. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot, you know, especially now there's a lot of people in need and there's a lot of people looking for good, clean, relevant things. Right. So don't give them, don't give your old crap to, to Goodwill or Salvation Army, all the many, many organizations that come and collect for people in need. Um, so there's all kinds of different ones. You can look on Google, you can look in you know your local area. Um, and there are some that come to your house and we'll take some come away. to your house and pick up. Yeah. Um, some you take, you know, you can get a tax donation for doing that. Um, but to me, it's more just the spirit of yeah. sharing, you know, it's like, I've got three of something, you don't have any, of course, I'm going to give you one. And and all these things in your house that could really be of service to someone, a sweater, a jacket, a blanket. It's like, there are people with nothing, you know, there are people who are really struggling, especially at this time. So, you know, free it, free it to somebody else. Yeah, it's true. Now, yeah, Peggy, I know people want to get in touch with you. They will want to get in touch with you. So is there a way to get in touch with you? Because I know they're going to want to. Is there any um, way? Yeah, I have a I have a, a website in my name, PeggyFitzsimmons.com. Okay. Um, right. So that's one way to do that. Um, okay. Yeah. But the book is released and you should all get it. It's a great book. And well, Thank you uh, for anyone buying it. I appreciate it and spreading the word because I know it can help people. And thank you guys for having me on to even talk about it. Oh, sure. Oh. I and helping me release some clutter about not wanting to do it. Oh, I'm um, so glad it. that you did it. I'm so yeah. grateful that you did it. It's uh, a lot from, of people needed the help, especially at the beginning of the year. Don't you find, James? This is the yeah. time where people go. It, it's something about the energy. It kind of whooshes you in, and you think, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to release and go on. True. But I'm not I going. When I go on this year, I'm not going to add. I think that for me is a takeaway in this book. I'm not going to add. That's perfect. That's perfect. Because it's uh, people usually feel that thrust at the beginning of the year, but it's also kind of heightened now as we're entering this age of Aquarius yeah. and things are totally. shifting. So it's like, there's a collective feeling of like, we got to reevaluate. We got to restore the soul to our world and decluttering is, is the avenue to do it, but there's many other ways to do it. Oh, Lisa MG says, what is the best way to stay focused? Great oh, question, no. Lisa. The best way to stay focused is to, Bring yourself to the present moment. Remember who you are. I'm a, I'm a soul in a human body here temporarily. <laughs> That's the what, key right there, here temporarily. You know, and yeah. what matters to my being right now, today, for the next year of my life, that will keep you focused. You will go astray. Your mind will take you all kinds of places. You come back. It's like, what is essential? What is of my essence? And, and you know, what isn't? What? 
And what isn't important. of your essence will become very clear to you as you look around your house tonight, anyone who's listening. And then Especially get excited. This age of Aquarius, things manifest so quickly. So things that don't support you will be shown right away, right? They'll, they'll be shown if you look right away. It'll be shown. And then you have to listen and follow it and, and trust your intuition, you know. That's the other part. The ego mind is just chatter. And we don't listen to that deeper knowing. I, we, you already know what needs to go. Every, everyone listening to this right now is going, oh, that closet in the one room or oh, that drawer. We all know it. So yeah. we just got to follow it. So true. Gosh. Did you purposely all wear blue? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? That Great is really question. funny because we first got them all around blue. No, we didn't purposely do it, but it's just, it's our, I don't know, it's our well, connection. Well, I'll tell you something it's funny. our soul group. Someone <laughs> said to me, I think you should wear purple tonight. And I said, okay. And then I said, no, I'm going to wear blue. <laughs> so. It's so funny. Yeah. Oh it's my funny. gosh. So um, Renee, do we have any qu uh, people that are calling in right now or should we take a call or two? Uh, currently, yeah, there are no fine. callers. Oh, okay. okay. Then that's amazing. Um, focus is a huge issue having ADD, but I am now educating myself on what it is and how it could affect me. That's from a ADD. Chris Tuck. <laughs> Kelly ADD. <laughs> 100%. Chris. Oh, there's some, the phone number right there. Okay. Well, the phone well I, will, I would say to someone who is, you know, who's dealing with ADHD, which many people are, that that's a, a, a true real thing in your brain chemistry and everything else. So to support that, you have to look around your environment to see what's contributing to more agitation, more distraction, um, you know, more overwhelm, more noise. And um, that, that could actually support that. That's very good, Peggy. Good insight. Wow. Very good. What about people want to give up, someone wants to give up crystals. They have a hard time giving up crystals. Oh. Oh, that's, oh, that's yeah, a tough one. It's the same thing, you know. They're they're working for you, and 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 that makes sense. And they may have a place, and it may be time for them to move on to help somebody else. Right. There's that whole thing about you're just holding on to something till yeah. someone else gets it, right? Yeah, no, we don't. On. We don't own that. anything. I mean, I right. think that's part of our culture. Like people own everything as a possession. You know, this yeah. money. You know, people with a hundred billion dollars in the bank. Like, what are we doing? Right. So what? Like, you know, or land, you know, you really don't own the land. The land belongs to the earth, to the people. So, I mean, I understand you own it, but you understand what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's an illusion. Everything is just coming, and, come and go. So crystals are the same thing. I work with many people with lots of crystals and they agonize over them just like the, the yes. top or anything else. Even more. <laughs> but if you're truly in your soul nature, you will be able to intuit if that crystal is, is serving you now or would be better off serving somebody else right Pe now. Peggy, just that point, what you just said there, serving someone else. Whenever I, I'm letting go of things, I always will say, you know, I hope this will help enhance someone else's life. You know, everything Absolutely. I let go of, whether it's clothes or an items, it's just helping somebody yes, else's life. Yes, that's the fun of it. That's the magic yeah. of it. When someone yeah. gets something from you that they need or they want or that loves them back, it's like the whole world opens up. They feel like they're not forgotten. They feel like they belong. They feel connected. I mean, that's and you why pass you, the energy on too. They're passing that, that beautiful energy yeah, on. Yeah, and that's your a little, enthusiasm, your love. You're passing that. I mean, on. You're passing it on, and it's like it just opens. That's why little, you know, little kids like they have cookie. You want a cookie? Like they don't even think about it. And and that's how you know we have that. That's who we really are. It's true. You know, remember James with the bracelets, the um, yes. <laughs> Marines bracelets. We would always just pass them around. We you were always them. giving them away. Always James. giving them bracelets amazing. around. Always yeah, flight attendants and neighbors and everything. Yeah. It was all over the place. Yeah, but yeah. people needed them, and we felt you. Know, you would. This would help you. This would help you. And then you also feel great when you give it because now you're yeah. in your soul nature. So it's yeah. a win-win. You know, yeah. give a healing, get a healing. You know, yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. And Renee, we have a phone call. Yes, we have a caller, Megan. I'm going to bring you into the studio. Megan, you're live. If you can mute your um, stream. Hello, I am here. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. What's your question, love? Hello, everyone. I was just wondering, I was listening to the the podcast tonight I had no idea what the topic was going to be about I have been not letting go of things for years and years and years and it's been a contentious thing with my husband 
And just in the last month, um, I really started to work on decluttering and I started creating creative spaces again. And I'm wondering if it's kind of tied to a transition I'm going um, Yeah, that's kind of kind of what I what my question is. It's been something I've been struggling with for years and then I just finally decided to do it. And I'm wondering if it's tied to anything larger. Okay, Peggy. Well, yeah, I think it's uh, congratulations. And yeah. it's a perfect story about the timing of things, you know, things let go of you when it's time because you don't have to force anything. And, and here you are a living example of that. All of a sudden, after years of contentious stuff, you're ready to release and it's happening. That's magical. That's the yeah. big, that's you coming back to your soul. Thank you. Because you're, my liberation is tied to yours. So when you free yourself, you free me. So thank you. You know, thank you for doing it. And I hope you're having fun with it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, honey. Thanks, Renee. I am. I really am. It's been a great experience. Good. Yeah, enjoy it. Keep on going. <laughs> and, and also, Peggy, you know, when we let other things go, we give space for new things to come in. Absolutely. That's the whole thing. Things of your soul come in. It's all about movement, energy, mm -hmm. flow. Absolutely. And it'll be exciting, you know, for Megan to see what comes in new from all true. that she's releasing. So yeah. true. New perspective. All right. Another caller coming in. I hear. I hear. Yes. Yes. You heard that right. It's another caller. <laughs> Please go ahead and announce yourself. Hi. Hello. Yes. Please go ahead. You're in the Hi. show. Hi. What's your name? Okay. Um, my name is Renee. Renee? Okay. Renee. Renee. Okay. What's your question? Honey? Renee. Yeah. Renee. And right. um, I've always been, well, I've always been a shop. Yes, Renee. I've always been a shopaholic. I love shopping. And I keep thinking the more I buy, I'm 72. And I, I have this worry. I need to live long enough to use everything I'm buying. And I kind of think, <laughs> is it tied to the fact that I'm thinking if I keep buying, that will give me more, more life. I won't, you know, that maybe that'll, that will make me live longer because of all the stuff I'm buying. Wow. Interesting. interesting. What do you think, Peggy? Well, yeah, I, I think, I, 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 I trust your intuition on that. I think you've linked up buying and possessions with life and you've made a, a connection there somehow, but it's not the truth though it feels like the truth. And now you're starting to question it. And I think that's beautiful because you're 72 and you want to okay. you want to be free to live and, and you will be free to live. But you have to unlink this idea yeah, that positions are keeping you. Yeah, that's a good uh, unlink okay. the yeah, idea. I just kind of made that connection. Yeah, it's a beautiful I connection. I just kind of made that connection while I was listening. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. great. Wow, fantastic. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You can't let things own you. <laughs> no way. Right. Exactly. Those yeah. possessions are not keeping you alive. What's keeping you alive is your spirit. So free it even more and you'll see. Okay. Well, good thing. Okay. I, I am a creative person. I do a, I do a lot of artwork and I keep thinking, you know, who am I going to give all this stuff to that I'm making? So I don't, you know, I don't know if there's a connection or not, but <laughs> I, well, I do a lot of I'm going to suggest something to you. I'm going I'm to suggest something too because it ran into us a lot. It'd be better for you, wouldn't it be better for you to make a choice of who's going to get your things while you're still in the body and make somebody feel very happy about you You being in control of who's going to get these things? That should be a lot of fun. Who's going to get them instead of later on when you're in the spirit world and you're like, oh, and they're not doing the things I want with my objects. I don't mm -hmm. want you. Know, so it's better now when you're in the body to give them away. That's the fun of it. Yeah. Won't that be great for you? Okay. Yeah, try that. Yep, I think yep, so. Absolutely, because I really, yeah, you're right, because I just keyed into what Peggy has said. She said, you know, that there are a lot of people in need, and I've got a lot of sweaters I've made, and a lot of blankets I've made, and they're all just sitting in my hobby room. I need to start this stuff away. Yep. Sharing, share, absolutely. share, to share. <laughs> share, 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 and especially now in the cold winter time and the COVID time when people are struggling. That would be gorgeous. And then you'd really be able to feel what your life is really about and your life force and your desire to live and everything. 
So go for and it. Share your energy, share your beauty, your art, your special yeah. gift of art with these people. I mean, that's incredible, sweetheart. Yeah. Good yes. for you. I'm glad you called in. Yes. Okay. Thank really. you so much. Well, thank you. You're happy New Year, darling. Much. It'll be yeah. happy now. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Okay. That was amazing. It's magic. <laughs> it's, wow. it's magic. It's magic. Wow. You know, it's wow. funny. I just want to tell you guys this. Um, James knows my aunt Dot, who's 90 years old, and he's been very kind to her. She lost a son, lost her husband, and so. Anyway, she's 90 years old and she she's struggles with a lot of anxiety. And so she's got the book and she's reading it. And she wrote me this email saying that, you know, I, I went through and I got rid of these old hangers from her husband, Carl, who passed. And, you know, this whole list of things. And then she said, and I'm not letting my ego voice be in charge anymore. <laughs> she said, this great. book was meant for me. Oh, I that's great. Great. She's 90 years old, you know. And How so wonderful. You know, oh. we're, we're all souls. There's no time. There's no age. There's no nothing. It's all about freeing up and loving each other and sharing. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So well, thank you for writing it, Peggy. We are, we're all yes. gifted. Oh, Peggy. Thank and thank you. you for being on the show tonight. I think you've thank helped you. so many people. Thank you. I know you, so you helped much. me. Awesome. Thank you. And you, you always help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have helped me too, and I appreciate it. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, Happy New Year. So, Happy New Year. The book is released and Amazon.com would be the best place to get it. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. And PeggyFitzsimmons.com if you'll do social media. <laughs> but please don't go to that website. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. Thanks, Kelly. Thank Thanks, James. Thanks, Thanks everybody. See everybody Thanks, next Renee. week. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher, James Van Prog, and spiritual medium and psychotherapist, Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.